we then need to look at product makes decisions when we have capacity constraints. So this is where you need to make a decision, but we have limited resources available. So in the question, they will tell you we only have a certain amount of raw material available, or we only have a certain amount of labor hours or machine hours available. And if there's a limit on the amount of resources that we have available, you might be faced with a situation where the company cannot produce everything that they would like to produce. So you can see this could prevent the company from manufacturing their full market demand. And when we have a situation like this, you need to be able to perform the calculations to determine how the company is going to maximize their profits when they are faced with limited resources. So I've included an example below so that we can go through this together. In this example, you can see the company has two different products. We've got king and we've got queen. For both products, I've given you the contribution per unit. So please remember that's just your selling price per unit minus your variable costs. And I've also given you the demand. So for king, the demand is 4,000 units. And for queen, it's 3,200 units. So ideally, guys, if this is the demand for the different products, that's the number of units that the company would like to manufacture. If they know that's what they can sell, they would obviously like to manufacture those units so that they can sell everything and they can maximize their profits. Just below, you can see I also tell you the kilograms of raw material that we require per unit. And lastly, we're told that there are only 20,000 kilograms of material available per annum. Now, as soon as you see that in a question, guys, that you need to see stars, and that means we have a potential constraint or a potential limiting factor. So they're not necessarily going to tell you in the question, there's not enough raw material in order to produce everything that we would like to produce. They're just going to tell you in the question that there's a restriction. There's only a certain amount of material available or a certain amount of labor or machine hours available. Whatever resource you are dealing with, the calculation is going to be exactly the same. So the first step in my calculation is to determine whether we actually have a constraint or a limiting factor. Because I've told you above that there's only 20,000 kilograms of material available per annum. But that might be more than enough. That might be enough material to produce everything that the company wants to produce. And then obviously they're not faced with a problem. We only face with a problem if we don't have enough raw material in order to produce all of the units that we would like to produce. So as soon as they give you a restriction in the question, the first step in your calculation is to determine if a constraint in fact actually exists, okay? Because I say to you, this means we have a potential constraint or a potential limiting factor because there's only a certain amount of material available. However, I don't know for a fact whether this is actually a constraint or a limiting factor. So that's the first part of my calculation. If I want to produce everything, how much raw material do I need? For king, I need 2.5 kilograms per unit multiplied by 4,000 units. So I need 10,000 kilograms. For queen, I need 4 kilograms per unit multiplied by 3,200 units. I need 12,800 kilograms. So in total, if I want to produce everything, I need 22,800 kilograms. How many kilograms are available? Only 20,000 kilograms are actually available, which means I have a shortage of 2,800 kilograms. So guys, because I have a shortage, I don't have enough material in order to produce 4,000 units of king and 3,200 units of queen. There's not enough material available. So I've confirmed that I definitely have a constraint or a limiting factor. Whichever terminology you guys use is fine. They use the two terms interchangeably. So you can see just below, because there's only 20,000 kilograms of material available, we have a constraint because we've calculated a shortage. Guys, if you do this calculation and there is not a shortage, you've got more than enough material available in order to produce everything, then obviously it's not a problem. 
then you are going to recommend that the company produces 4,000 units of king and 3,200 units of queen. So this shortage here, guys, means that the company can't produce everything that they would like to produce because there's not enough raw material available. So we are going to have to recommend how many units of king and queen they should produce in order to maximize their profit. So how should they use this material in order to maximize their profit? Now, first, if we just look at the contribution per unit, it seems like queen is the better product because queen has a higher contribution per unit. So if I look at the contribution per unit, I'm inclined to say make all of queen and then use whatever material is left over for the production of king. However, guys, please note that that is incorrect. Wherever you find that you have a scarce resource or a limiting factor or a constraint, then what you need to do in step two of your calculation is you need to calculate the contribution per constraint. So what I mean is you need to calculate the contribution per kilogram, per labor hour, per machine hour, etc. Now, we identified that we do have a constraint. Our constraint in this question is raw material. So if my constraint is raw material and I'm working with my raw material in kilograms, I need to now calculate my contribution per kilogram. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the contribution per unit, which I was given in the question, and I'm going to convert it from a contribution per unit into a contribution per kilogram. Now it's a very simple calculation. You take the contribution per unit which was given. We divide by the number of kilograms that we need in order to make one unit. So for king, we are going to divide by 2.5 kilograms, and for queen, we are going to divide by 4 kilograms. You divide by the raw material that you need for one unit. And then what you've done is you've taken the contribution per unit and you've converted it into a contribution per kilogram. Now, the reason why I'm converting it into a contribution per kilogram is because raw material is my scarce resource. And in this question, we're working with raw material in kilograms. So because that is my constraint, I need to calculate the contribution per kilogram. If my constraint was labor hours, I would then calculate the contribution per labor hour. If my constraint is machine hours, you calculate the contribution per machine hour, etc. You get the point. Because it's raw material, I'm calculating the contribution per kilogram. Now let's look at the logic behind what you've calculated over here. This tells me, for every one kilogram of material that I put into production, King will give me a contribution of 80 cents per kilogram, and Queen will give me a contribution of 75 cents per kilogram. So instead of looking at the contribution per unit that you sell, you are now looking at the contribution in terms of your scarce resource. So for every one kilogram that I put into production, king gives me a higher contribution per kilogram than queen. So the better product is actually king. I'm going to rank king number one, and I'm going to rank queen number two. It is better to use my scarce resource on the production of king. Because for every kilogram that I put into production, I get contribution of 80 cents instead of contribution of 75 cents. So it's better to use my scarce resource on the production of king because that's how I will maximize my profit. So you can see below, king has the higher contribution per kilogram and therefore it's ranked the highest. So all we do in step three is we now need to recommend the optimum usage of material or the production plan for this company. So this is just based on what we calculated previously. We know that there's a total of 20,000 kilograms of material available per annum. We also know from our calculation in step two that the better product is product king because it gives me a higher contribution per kilogram. So I'm going to produce all of product king. And if I want to produce all of product king, that's 4,000 units, and I need 2.5 kilograms per unit. I need 10,000 kilograms if I want to make all of king. So if I make all 4,000 units of king, that's going to take 10,000 kilograms, which means I'm only going to have 10,000 kilograms left 
for the production of queen. So if I've got 10,000 kilograms for the production of queen, how many units can I make with 10,000 kilograms? Well, we know when we produce queen, we were told in the question, we need four kilograms in order to make one unit. So we saw if we wanted to make all 3,200 units, we needed 12,800 kilograms. So we said that's not possible. We've only got 10,000 kilograms remaining. So how many units can we make? Well, each unit needs four kilograms. So you're just going to take the 10,000 divided by four, which means you can make 2,500 units of queen. So we can then wrap this up and we can conclude what the company should do. The better product was King because it had a higher contribution per kilogram, so we make all of King, and we use the remaining material that's left over for the production of Queen, which means we can only make 2,500 units of Queen. So because Queen had the lower contribution per kilogram, this is the product that we sacrificed. And this is the optimal production plan for this company. This is where they will maximize their profit. So please, if you do have a situation where they give you a limit in the question, there's only a certain amount of raw material, labor hours, or machine hours available, these are the three steps that you need to work through. First, calculate if you actually have a scarce resource or a constraint or a limiting factor. Then if you do have a limiting factor, you need to calculate the contribution per limiting factor. So per kilogram, per labor hour, per machine hour. And once you've done that, you can rank the product so that you can see which one's better. And in step three, you can then recommend the optimal production plan to the company. Now, in this example, guys, we dealt with a situation where there was only one scarce resource. You might have a situation where there is more than one scarce resource. But that's outside the scope of this syllabus. Because please note, if there's more than one scarce resource, we are going to have to use linear programming in order to determine this optimal production plan above. And linear programming is outside the scope of your syllabus. So you can see just below, candidates are required to consider and conclude on whether linear programming is required, but the execution thereof is excluded from the core competencies. So that comes directly from the psych competencies. That's what psych says. So Psyker says, please note, if there is more than one scarce resource, so in addition to material, we also have labor or machine hours as a scarce resource. We've got more than one scarce resource. You will then need to use linear programming in order to determine this optimal production plan. Please note, that's all you need to know. You need to be able to discuss in your test or in your exam, if there's more than one scarce resource, we need to solve this using linear programming but you do not actually have to do the calculation as that is beyond the scope of your syllabus. 